What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here. And look, I am number one on the ladder right now, so I feel safe doing something else other than rank now, which is going to be Judgment. And oh yeah, um, some people were a little confused uh, how I was a mod because it doesn't show a mod. It doesn't, it doesn't give me the mod badge um, that, for example, are there any mods online? Where's Krat? Where is he? Must be in the game. But, um, yeah, the little mod badge that is on the mod bot right there, and it's a yellow text. Um, that's what mods have, but because I have the weekly winners, I guess the weekly winner badge and color overrides the mod badge and color, so people won't know I'm a mod and won't ask me questions um, relating to that stuff uh, when I have a weekly winner. So I guess that's not good. I guess um, that should be something that should be changed. I guess it should show both badges or definitely at least show the mod one because um, mods are important and they're for new players to ask questions to and stuff like that. But we're going to play Judgment today. No about that. First post-release Judgment for me and it starts off... Well, I have a lot of good energy stuff. I have Boom Reaver decent, Dust Runner good, Freak very good, Brood okay, Copper and Brood are basically the same. Just D cost four more, or three more. Here I'll take, although the Dust Runner is probably more bang for your buck, um, in Judgment you want to take just formidable creatures, and I think a three drop of Boom River is a good option, so I'll take that. Now I see here a Rizzle Beam Potion, which is an amazing um, utility scroll, and then I have a Feedback Jolt, which is not very good removal. Um, here I might want to take, I mean, I do have an All Hearts Disciple here and an Eager Scryer, so it's two Decay 3 drops, but I think since I already have the Boom River, it's just better to take the Gravelock Freak here and maybe even the Brood here. So I'm going to go start by doing that. And now, I'll take the Brood here. And then we don't have a single creature of these next 12 scrolls, so that's a little unlucky. Uh, I could stay on color and take the feedback jolt, or I could take the scroll that is probably the best out of these. This is the Rosa Bean Potion. I will stay on color, like, considering I have three energy scrolls. Now I see a Hall's Bomb loss and a useless contraption champion ring. So we don't have any uh, creatures to pick from, so it's just not that good. I'll just take Pilgrim's Fate. It's nice magic armor if I ever need it. It could be splashed in any kind of deck. Still not getting any creatures. So it would be really nice to start getting some of that those guys. Uh, sure, Binding Root is interesting kind of removal. Alright, now we got some nice energy structures, so I guess I'm going to take one of those. Unfortunately, I'm in the same row, so I can't take a Forge and an Oculus Can I, I have to choose one. I'll take the Useless Contraption here, stays on Color of Energy. We got some creatures down here. Um, I'll take Horn of Ages, the easiest thing to splash, and none of these other three scrolls are very good. Uh, now we have some a nice Order guy. Here I'll take the Forge. The Forge is just amazing. Now, Ragged Wolf, Tribesman, Kabonk, Uneasy Alliance. Uh, easiest thing to splash is Ragged Wolf, so I think I'm just going to get it. This is a Copper Rod, that's good. It stays on energy for me. None of these, like, Beast Rod's not a really good splash. It's like 1 2 2, so I don't really want that. I'll just take the Royal Vanguard. Who knows, maybe I'll go really deep into order after seeing a lot of great scrolls from order. Um, Charmark gives me growth, so I might want to go energy growth, considering I do have Ragged Wolf and Binding Root, which is really, really uh, nice splash cards. So yeah, I'm going to take the Charm Memorial. A nice segue into growth. I don't really go that high in resources. Uh, I don't really need Skull Shrine. Copper Auto is a nice scroll. You almost always get a one-for-one -one trade with it, so I like that. Uh, I don't know. Uneasy Alliance. Okay, now we got a Scatter Gunner. That's good. And Charge Crow is good also. I'm not sure what I'm going to take there. I already have a lot of structures. Here I'll take Electrify because none of these other scrolls look that good in my deck. Pilgrim's Feet, an interesting splash. Okay, this is actually a, a pretty unlucky draft here. I mean, we're not that deep into it, but we have not two great choices. I only have, I barely have any creatures, so I should probably take the Scatter Gunner, 
But Charge Scroll is just a better scroll overall than Scattergun. But Scattergunner's two health or three costs is just really, really low. But also, I'm just gonna take the Scattergunner anyways because I really need creatures. You can't win with the Charge Quill. Scattergunner can at least hit the idols for some damage. Uh, Pilgrim Speed again, I guess. I mean, I could take the Oasis out here, and, and there's a what, Wetland Ranger and the Kinfolk Ranger. I think I will. I what could be on an amazing splash, or actually a Gallant Defender. What am I deeper in growth or order? Well, I actually have a good amount of order stuff. I don't know. But we have growth stuff over here, so I'll take the Sister of the Owl. Ugh, I'm not getting the energy stuff I want. Um, Wetland Ranger. Okay, this is a Machinated and a Snargle. See, I'm getting good energy stuff, but it's on the same rows itself. Take the useless contraption, um, revenant. Hmm. Maybe it should have been growth from the start. I don't know. Is it machinated or a snargle? Like I said, I think I have to go with the creature of the snargle, an element of creatures. So I'll take that. Now, overdrive incendiaries. Uh, or trauma. I think I'm just gonna take the incendiaries. Okay, there was a Canada. See, Canada and Boomer are on the same row. Come on. Guys, separate rows, please. <laughs> Another Horn of Ages. Proximity Charge is, isn't bad here. Then we got a Reflecton. Now we're getting some better stuff. A lot of three drops, though. I don't have any kind of attack buff as it stands, so maybe I'm just going to take the Boom River over the Canada. I think I actually am going to do that because I have no way of buffing attack right now, so there's not really a point in having Canada over a Boom River. Alright. I mean, Canada does actually deal one damage to the unit behind. Yeah, so I'll just take it for some flexibility. Um, so Replicaton. Now, do I take the Destroyer or the Inferno Blast? I'll take the Destroyer. I'd rather have the unit. Clock Library, Inferno Blast. I don't know. Um, this gives me more growth. I don't really go deep into growth. I only go to one growth. I don't really need all that stuff. Take the new orders that can do stuff. Oh, this draft is all over the place. I'm not sure. Maybe I should have gotten order or growth in the start, but not those didn't have as good stuff in really the beginning though. So I don't know. Uh, I think I'd rather have the unit, so I'll take the cl clock library. Another freak. I guess that's a good thing. All right, then a siege cracker. Um. I don't know. Overdrives. Another Lockling Brood. Okay, actually, this is actually might be okay. I'm taking most of the energy scrolls I see. Um, I don't think this is gonna be a good deck or enemies. Then it can. All right, now it's looking. It's looking like it might work. And then an Elder. Okay. Like this last like three. This, these rows are really helping a lot. Fury is great, but I think I should take the Elder here. I have a round number of creatures. I mean the cannon. So we'll take the cannon over the fury, even though fury is great. Uh, blah blah. blah. Fell, but whatever. Uh, resident homes, easy things to splash, and then a gravelock elder actually gives all those gravelocks that have one extra health. So suddenly this deck came from pretty bad to somewhat decent-ish. Okay, I don't think it's very good, but it. It's usable, I think. I have a lot of three drops. I have a couple four drops. I should have gone with four drops, then a couple five, then one five, and then it goes to six. So this isn't like that bad. And since I have a trouble more, I guess I should just have a binding root, a ragged wolf, and I don't know, overdrive. I guess I'll keep. I could put that in like a forge and have like a million gun on baton in like a second. I could actually use a put down overdrive and destroyer for a, a hasted <laughs> overdrive. Um, should I? Hmm. Right now I'm going the binding root ragged wolf memorial thing, or should I go the horn of ages new orders route? I think horn of ages is a stronger scroll. 
So I'm going to go that route. And new orders. And for that reason, we don't need tribal memorial anymore. In which case, I'll just put in pilgrim's feet. I might need it. Pilgrim's feet, I would say, is a bit better than resident home. So let's just call this energy order. And hopefully, I can get five wins with it. I'm not. I'm not too uh, confident in that though because it's not the best deck in my opinion. So I'll be back when a match is found. Post commentary mode initiated. So if you didn't know, uh, when I like when I show the full run of my judgment videos, I like to speed it up and post commentary it because if I didn't speed it up, then the video would be like two hours long. Um, unless I would like lose the first two matches really fast, but. Uh, yeah, so this first match I got off to a very, very, very slow start. I have like three six drops, four drop, but I th am feeling okay because I can just play those six drops in succession and hopefully um, first line won't have anything to deal with them. But I'm he has a much stronger board presence early in the game and I'm very, very, very worried about this. So I'm really hoping I can get a win in this first match because... Judgment, I mean, all the matches are counted equally, but the um, it's basically five wins or two losses. You're going to have one or the other. Um, like, you get the same reward if you get five wins and one loss or five wins and zero losses. Just once you get your second loss, you're out of the judgment run. You take your reward for whatever you have. And he plays a solemn giant there, which I have nothing to deal with. Uh, I can't deal with it. I'm just going to have to give up a creature here. I give up my um, candle, that's why I'm going to jiggle so fast right now. And you see, I also have no no uh, answer to that Lockwing Brood. So look at the board, it looks like he has a huge advantage. I don't think I'm going to be able to come back into this game. I'm considering surrendering right now. Um, yeah, I do have a chance. I can actually kill that Sun Giant with an Electrify. It's for a hasted one damage. Um, so it wasn't like a huge, uh, huge play there, but... I mean, it works. It did cost a couple scrolls. And um, he has so many creatures on the board, and he's actually going to ping down the handles really fast. So I have to actually try to be kind of aggressive. So I do move uh, down and put a proximity charge. I'm not proximity charge. Useless contraption in front. I wish it was proximity charge. But uh, he's able to use a um, tick bomb to take that out. So I am in a bad spot, and I just really have nothing to do but play a another freak. So yeah, it's not going well for me. He can win the game on the bottom very soon. He plays a Snargle, which is a strong creature that can ping the idol really fast. And I don't have, like, many spells to do anything to him. I just have creatures and structures. I'm. It's pretty much impossible to come back from in scrolls games when you don't have, like, utility scrolls, like spells and enchantments to come back. Like, if he already has all this board control, I have not a big way to get it back. I do play a Lockling, another Lockling Brood, but hopeful, hoping that he won't have an answer because I didn't have an answer for his, but he does have the Blast Strike to take it out, and I almost lose my Forge there, but interestingly, he kind of positions kind of odd. Um, and I uh, play a couple things, and I'm just hoping he doesn't have, like, a Machinated, uh, and, like, a... I'm hoping he doesn't, like, win the game really fast. That's basically what I'm... He takes out my Forge, and... I do get a proximity charge, which will hold him off for a little bit, and I have all three of my creatures attack in the middle, so I'm feeling like I might have a chance to come back. If I do, that would be... I'm thinking that would be so slim, though, because all the things he had on the board, and he had such big board control, and that Ironclad Reaver is a very strong creature as well. But he plays around that kind of interest. He actually gives up on his creatures to the proximity charge, and my, and my uh, little, little bugger back there is going to be able to take down uh, his... Snargle, and then I move down with my units to take out his Reaver and his um, one of his other guys. And it looks like I actually came back into the game with that last turn. So that was a huge turn of events there. He's able to take my guy off the binary, so I'm not too worried about that. He had like an almost filled board, and I had just like a couple of freaks on the board to fast rewind a couple turns. So I'm incredibly pleased with um, my possible comeback here. And... He just, uh, I don't really know what happened for him. He he kind of didn't really play around the proximity charge turn too well. Maybe he didn't have any kind of answers for it, but he 
you've kind of played into it like the worst possible way because he moved up too so i can kill his other creatures so that was just really a huge turnaround turn he puts to the end of a turn to play the vicious strike here and i'll just be able to clear his board so that was very interesting i had a complete turnaround of this match and he surrenders seeing that he's not going to regain the board control so that's a first game win and on to game two so here i again don't have the best starting hand this time i do have a copper automaton to at least kill something of my opponent's early one drop but it's not amazing anyways and here uh he plays a couple gray box i have gray box in my deck too so this should be a fun match um, unfortunately he has uh he's plays another gray block wow and I do get the Locking Bridge, I hope he doesn't have any uh, things to deal with that. And luckily for me, he doesn't. And the Elder nerf, unfortunately, does not give that, um, that Locking Bridge an extra attack so that the Clock Lover he used for protection will survive. But I top deck the Grave Lock where he can play that. So now I have all these Grave Locks, and they might end up attacking. So here he plays Ragged Wolf just to kill that. And both my uh, Grave Locks attack. And I uh, decide not to move my Elder out of the range of the Catapult of Goo because I want it to take the one damage so that my Freak attacks. This is a little interesting thing I decided to do. And uh, so I have that Freak attack and I'm able to take out his Scatter Gunner or the Catapult of Goo. I go for the Scatter Gunner and I play uh, some more things. So I'm feeling good about this. I have much stronger creatures than he has on the board. And he plays some things, but... I'm going to be able to play another Freak, which is really strong, especially with that extra health from the uh, other elves. I decided not to play the other Freak just because I do go with a hasted one damage, um, just like last match where I hasted the one damage, um, with the Forge this time to take out the Catapult of Goo. And he sees that he's not going to come back, so he surrenders. So that's two straight wins for this deck, and on to match three. This time I actually get a decent starting hand. I have a two drop into a three drop. I sacrifice Canada there, interestingly. I mean, Canada kind of sucks in my deck right now because there's no way of me buffing damage. So it's just a two attack piercing unit. So Boom Reaver is probably just better. And um, he gets into star. He actually plays Supercharged on that match. I'm not sure how that interacts. I'm not sure if it hits the idol, he would get extra growth or he would take damage. Like, I, if anybody knows how that would work, uh, please comment below. Yeah, and by the way, guys, just comment anything below if you're a new player. I'll answer everything I can. And he just surrenders right then and there. I guess he saw I was just going to kill that guy, and he wouldn't have a comeback from my little battalion of units. So I'll take the win where I can get it. And I'm 3-0 with this deck that I thought would be pretty bad. And now he gets a strong unit out before I can really do anything. So I'm a little worried about this match. And he has two strong units before I can really do much. And now I play a Lock and Bird, and hopefully he doesn't have anything to kill it, and he does. So, very bad start for me. I do have a Proximity Charge, which can hold him off. And Proximity Charge says, work before. And I'm going to hope that it wards this guy off. He does give up his... His, um... 4, 2, 1... Sister the bear to the proximity charge. I play the freak and I'm out of scrolls. I'm top decking now and he has some pretty strong units He makes an interesting decision here to move down with that guy. I'm not I wouldn't have done that if I was him I, I know it survives, but this just set me up and I could play that uh, that destroyer there so make sure it kills it because He can't move out of the way and he's complaining a little bit how energy's OP and eh. I don't think, even if energy is OP, I don't know how he tells that from this Judgment match. He's had pretty strong creatures. You can really do well with any deck in Judgment. It just depends on the scrolls you get. Um, I don't know. I've seen many mistakes in his play. So I think he just, he didn't luck out having to face me. But he uh, he's playing around and I'm actually going to go for, again, the Structure Electrify Haste play. It's the third time I've done it in this run. So, I guess uh, that was really, really nice. And I actually play the Clock Library just because I want to keep my Forge alive. And I knew that Shark Strike I play this turn would probably die. And now, I see that that giant 5 attack thing is going to attack me. So I do just play Protection. He has Ragwolf, unfortunately. But at least both my Freaks attack there. And 
Although I have very little units, I'm able to take things out pretty effectively. I get another six drop out, and I leave that uh that uh, sister of the bear there because I can actually just a feedback jolt it because it is enchanted. So I take that out. I actually should have probably sacrificed before I feedback jolted just because I didn't know what I was gonna do yet. Yeah, guys, if you're a new player, just always sacrifice for scrolls or resources before you decide before you decide. Um, before you decide what you're going to play and stuff, before you actually play the stuff. Because you never know what you're going to get if you sacrifice your scrolls and stuff. So, unfortunately I'm not able to kill the Butlin Ranger, but I'm able to uh, just play more units and stuff like that. And now I can actually, uh, I'm actually think I just pump it and play the Boom Reaver here. And I have all my stuff attacking next turn, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Especially with the new orders I could play. And the interesting thing just plays those two scrolls. Doesn't really do him much. He he has to kill the middle idol, not the top idol. And he surrenders, seeing he can't come back. So that is win number four. I just need one more win. Um before I lose two times to get the full reward for five for five wins with this judgment run. And I would be very pleased if I get that with this kind of deck, which in my opinion is very weak. And uh I get a good starting hand again. I get to um Go a two drop into a three drop, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I play the Kenneta over the Scatter Gunner only because he's decay and he might have a Soul Steal, so I'm a little afraid of that. So I want the creature with three health, and I'm able to play the Lockling Brood the following turn. He plays a lot of little creatures, but they don't look too much of threats, and I put the Lockling Brood behind so that he can attack after, but. The Searing Shackles kills him, so oh well. And I just play the Scatter Gunner now. And he doesn't have enough attack to kill a gun on us, so he can take out that Mangy Rat he played in protection. And I don't really mind that I'm going to lose uh, lose that gun automaton to that husk. I hope he doesn't have like a Soul Stain out so he can take out my Cannon out of two. But again, it wouldn't really be the end of the world. And he just surrenders right then and there, so back to Livecom. Alright, guys. Wow, I am very surprised I went 5-0 with that deck. I did not think that deck was a good judgment deck by any means. So I'm very pleased with that. And I don't really take care what I take because I have a full play set. So um, I usually just pick uh, random scrolls until the rares and then I make sure I actually... I right, definitely want Great Black Freaks. Real Freaks are... Pretty valuable. I think they go for a lot on the black market. Um, and then a couple rares, I guess. I think I think Forge is a very valuable rare. Yeah, I am working on a t full tier three set though, so it is still kind of important. Um, and then I believe Rivak Elder over Canada. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's back-to-back -back five win judgment runs, one before release, one after release, and that'll be it for today. So like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you tomorrow.